All right, so this is my natural follow-up video to my previous video that was titled D-SLAM Shenanigans. This isn't a D-SLAM, but a CMTS, or Cable Modem Termination System. So just like DSL was one type of broadband internet connection you could get that ran high frequency signals to pass data over the existing telephone lines separate from your phone service that was faster than dial-up at the time, a CMTS is used to send high frequency signals over your existing cable TV network to provide higher speed broadband internet connection. So here we have a Cisco UBR 7223 CMTS. This is very closely related to the 7200 series routers. And I quite like it for that. It's got a really interesting hardware configuration. It's very, very similar. So first off, it's a lot bigger. So this has four fans on the side. It's still three U tall, but oh my goodness, is this thing heavy? There's a reason it's not on my rack and it's sitting on my workbench. It's because I honestly didn't trust my ability to put it into the rack because gosh, it's just so heavy. But yeah, a little bit bigger, a little bit longer mainly. So if we look at the back first, we have a power supply. We have a NPE card, just like the 7200 series has. That's the processor itself. On the front, at the top, we have the IO card. So this just has ports on it. On the right, we have our two serial ports. One's the aux port, one's the console port. Um, they're DB25 style, just like the older 7200s are. Um, unlike the RJ45 that's used in the newer Cisco gear. But then we have an Ethernet port for a transceiver and an actual RJ45. I'm using the RJ45. It's just a fast Ethernet connection, so no gigabit. And then on the left, we have two slots for PCMCIA flashcards. I'm only using the bottom one. I forget which size that card is in terms of capacity, but uh, it's storing the iOS image. And then down here, we have one port adapter slot. It's just blank at the moment. I'll have to get a card to put in there. Here we have two slots for our cable cards. So these are like full length slots, which apparently you can actually do that on the 7200s. These cards won't work in them, but uh, I found that interesting. I forget, I think it was, it was, yeah, it was Cloud Retro who showed it. Um, you could pull a little divider out in a 7200 router and have a full length card slot. So that's just like these. Now, the top one has a UBR-MC11C card in it. This just provides, so, two numbers there, both one, one downstream channel, one upstream channel. And on the bottom, we have a blank. So this is the actual cable interface. Downstream is the connection. It's the signal that the CMTS generates and is sent out to the cable modems. So that's basically its transmit interface. Upstream is a, is a receiver. It takes in the signal from cable modems on the network and that's how data passes back to the CMTS. Now, this is a bit more complicated than a DSL setup. Um, in terms of hardware, we have what's called a diplex filter. So upstream and downstream are whole separate frequencies. There we go, so I can get that to stay. So this is the downstream side. It's 54 through 1220. At least that's what this diplex filter is uh, rated at. And then this is the upstream size, which is five to 42 megahertz. So on the upstream side, we, it just goes straight through two attenuators. So that's 40 dB of attenuation total into the upstream port. So it's going through attenuators on pretty much everything because this isn't connected to an actual cable network. All these runs are very short and I don't want to have too high of a signal level causing an issue or damaging something. So now on the upstream side, that's a very high frequency, but the output of this port is actually 44 megahertz. So that's an IF frequency and it needs to be increased to the actual downstream frequency that you pick. So we have what's called a frequency up converter. This is a Wavecom UC 4040D up converter. It's actually meant for a 36.125 megahertz IF, but so technically it's not the right type for this setup. And that could be part of the issue I'm having with a lower speed than what I'm expecting, but it is working and up converters are expensive. So I managed to get this one for a really good price, probably because it's IF frequency is a little bit different than usual, but I could not find a listing for one that was the right frequency for a good price, so we will be sticking with this one. So out of the um, downstream port, which that's at IF frequency, 44 megahertz, goes through an attenuator and then the input of frequency up converter. 
after it passes through this, it's changed to a higher frequency that you set in this unit itself, and it's going back out this cable into the diplex filter. So on this, I have it set for 501.625. Now, because the IF frequency of this is wrong, or rather, not matching what the CMTS is outputting, this is actually not the frequency it's outputting on the high frequency side. So, I guess that's one downside to having the wrong type op converter, is it's not going to output the right frequency that you put in here. But in my case, it's working. It doesn't actually matter all that much. So, that's what we're going to stick with. Out of this filter, it just goes over here to this little Motorola surfboard cable modem. Model number SB5101. Very simple modem. It's actually DOCSIS 2.0 capable, but this CMTS is only capable of DOCSIS 1.0. I believe DOCSIS 1.1 support was added later on in software. I don't believe this one supports it, but I'm just gonna keep it at 1.0 for now. And then after that, it's literally just straight ethernet, straight in my computer. So I'm gonna go over the registration process and then we'll just do some tests, just like I did on my DSLAM video. So the first thing this does is when you power up a cable modem, unlike DSL where you have a dedicated line RAM to uh, your house from the DSLAM, where those wires that I mean, it's shared with your telephone line is dedicated to you. A cable modem network uses the same cable connection for everything. So, after your diplex filter, you go into splitters, out to more cable modems, out to more splitters. I mean, that's a very much simplification of the actual setup, and there's a lot more that goes into it, but. Every, everyone's modem is effectively on the same exact connection back to the CMTS. And you can have multiple CMTSs on one cable network as well with combiners. So the first thing the cable modem does is it searches for a downstream frequency. So basically just, unless it has one saved from a previous connection, which most modems will remember what frequency it used last, and it'll try that one first when it powers up again. But... First thing it does is it searches for the CMTS. Once it finds a downstream frequency, it receives the upstream frequency it should use from the CMTS itself. So that's configured in this unit. Once the RF side is negotiated like that and connected and everything else it has to do, uh, the modem sends a DHCP request to the CMTS. So this is all based on configuration files and provisioning, unlike a DSL connection where, which I mean, I'm sure you can provision DSL modems, but in my setup, I had to put a username and password into the DSL modem, and I had configured the port on the DSLAM uh, through a dedicated like connection on the ATM interface, so it was m more specific in terms of like each config, each each modem has its own configuration. You have to set up the username and password and all that. But in a cable network, it's all provisioned. So you would just give your cable provider the MAC address of your modem, and then everything's provisioned. So when the cable modem requests an IP address or DHCP from the CMTS, or most of the time it's relayed to another server. So this CMTS is actually set up to be the DHCP server. It's also a time of day server and a TFTP server and a router, so it's doing everything right now. Now, that's not how you'd usually have it set up, but it's just, I mean, it can do it, and in my case, that's just the best setup for testing. So it gets a DHCP address, along with a whole bunch of different DHCP options. So it gets the TFTP server's IP address, it gets the time of day server's IP address, DNS servers, it gets a host name and a domain name, and a time zone, all from DHCP. So when it sends that request, that's its like initial configuration. And alongside that, it also sends the name of a file it's going to use, a DOCSIS configuration file. It's set up as the boot file in the DHCP server. So after DHCP is done, the next thing it does is it gets the time of day. So these are very SNMP capable. So the I'm not sure if it's part of DOCSIS standard, if it's a requirement for this, but all my modems have never registered until they get the time of day from the CMTS. Now again, you could have a separate server for that, but in my case, this CMTS is being the time of day server. It's different than NTP, it's a different protocol. I don't entirely know a whole lot about it, but it's very simple to set up. It's literally two commands in the configuration here, which I'll show in a little bit um, to enable that. So, does DHCP, gets a time of date, 
Then the next thing it does is it does a TFTP download of a Doxis configuration file. Now, this configuration file contains a whole bunch of different options, and this has been my hardest part in this whole process, is finding, one, the DHCP options that each modem needs, and that seems to be different per manufacturer, but two, which Doxis configuration files options are required to get these online. Now, the configuration file defines your upstream and downstream speed limits, so that's, I mean, if you pay for a certain connection speed, that's in the Doxis configuration file that your modem is served by the TFTP server. Once it gets that, you're pretty much online. Now, there's more things that they can do after they get the TFTP download. The Cisco cable modems can, di can also download a like iOS configuration file. So if you had one that had phone ports on it, you could uh, have it all configured through a separate file that it downloads after the after the Doxis configuration file is downloaded. But all in all, it's a very provisioned and configuration file like based automatic system. It's really interesting. It's a lot more complicated than DSL, but I quite like it. Now turn to modems. I also have this Eris modem. This has been the bane of my existence for the past week and a half as I've been working on this, but I would really like to get this one working because it has two phone ports on it, telephone one and two. Now they make models with more of them, but this is a TM502G, so this would actually be able to provide telephone service. Now the problem I'm having with this one right now is as soon as it gets the DHCP offer from the CMTS in this case, it just immediately hangs. It stops responding to ping on either side, so both the cable side and the ethernet side, it just stops. So I either have to power cycle it or wait a little bit, it'll fix itself. But I have not gotten this one to be online yet. Now, eventually I'm gonna make a demonstration video with this CMTS, my DSLAM, some routers, some voice gateways. So hopefully by then I'll have this one configured and working with its phone ports. But for now, we'll just stick with this one. Now, in terms of tests, after that whole long, sporadic uh, explanation of how cable networks work, which feel free to correct me on everything in the comments, let's just do some basic tests like I did in my DSLAM video. So first off, I'll just ping the CMTS. Now, um, the other thing is there's a separate IP range usually for your modems and the actual clients. So most modems will have a router integrated. This one kind of does. When you first power it up, it will give you a DHCP address in the 192.168.100 range. And you can go to that address and get a management page. But as soon as it registers with the CMTS and is online, that just goes away. It just goes into bridge mode. So how I have this set up right now is um, the CMTS is set up with the MAC address of this modem only. It serves it all those details over DHCP and that's in the 10.0.0 range. The IP address of this card itself in the CMTS is 10.0.0.1. This modem is set, well, it's reserved. It's always gonna be served address 10.0.0.3, and that's based on the MAC address. My computer is static to 10.0.0.50. Now you would usually have a separate IP range, so for your clients versus the modems themselves. So that's something I'll have to get working, but for now I have it set on the same range just because it's easier to work with, less routing to deal with. So, yeah. So let's do 10.0.0.1 for the CMTS. If we ping that, you have around seven millisecond ping time. So that's the lowest I've been able to get this. I'm not sure if it's a configuration file setting or something I'm doing wrong, but, or it could very well be the fact that this up converter is not the right type, but I was able to, that's that's the fastest I've been able to get it. Now if I ping Cloudflare at 1.1.1.1, about 27 to, it's ranged about 20 to 30 millisecond ping time, and that could very well be my home network. But yeah, that's how the latency is for now. Now if we do a speed test, and here's what I was talking about, the lower speed than I expect. Um, the specification for Doxus 1.0 says it can do 40 megs a second download and 10 megs a second upload. Now that's what I have it set to in the modems configuration file. So in that Doxus configuration file, it is set to allow the highest possible speeds. Now it only gets about two up and 22 and a half down. So 
Not sure if that's just a hardware issue or if that's a something's not configured right problem, but those are the speeds I get from it. A lot faster than DSL, as you can see. Now, if I go and telnet to the CMTS, I'm going to show you all the configuration. If I can hit enter. Telnet, we'll just use 10.0.0.1 for the address of the card itself. Okay, so here is the telnet connection to it. The host name is set to Sydney. Um, that's actually just the default. Well, not default, but it was the it's the host name they picked in one of the examples. So that's what I set it to instead of router. Now, if we do show run, see all my configuration here. Now, let's see if I can get this to scroll. Okay. So I'm just gonna go top to bottom in the entire iOS configuration file. So at the very top, we have. Uh, the only really significant thing is service, UDP, small servers, max servers, no limit. This seems to be an option to set the limit of UDP servers the CMTS is able to run internally. Not entirely sure, but that is used for the time server functionality. You have to have that set, so I'm assuming the default is zero. Uh, then we have the host name, enable password Cisco. I don't have password encryption enabled. That's just, it doesn't matter. And then cable time dash server. That is the other command that you have to do to enable the time server in the CMTS. So literally just those two, the service UDP small servers and cable time server, those two commands, it acts as a time server. So that was really easy. I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, IP domain name, protosterlabs.net. So that's my domain name and it's not really being used in this context, but one thing that you'll find out about these cable modems, especially these ones, is they are incredibly picky about the DHCP options. It needs to have a host name and a domain name sent to it over DHCP, even though it's not using it anywhere, at least from what I can tell. It literally will just ignore the DHCP offer if, it, if there's something missing or something's formatted incorrectly, and that goes for most of them. I, that's been a troubleshooting nightmare for me through this entire one and a half weeks I've worked on it, but I have just not, I've just constantly had an issue where you see it send a DHCP request, the CMTS sends an offer back, and then it just sends it over and over and over again. It, it's as if it wasn't hearing it, but literally if you have that problem, 90% of the time it's probably something's wrong in your DHCP response, and the modem's just straight ignoring it. So that's all sorts of fun. Uh, IP DHCP pool modems. Let's see, oh, that was too far. So here is the DHCP configuration. Now host 10.0.0.3, subnet mask. Um, that is, that's the IP address I'm reserving for this modem. Now right below it, you see client identifier. That's, that's doing a MAC address reservation basically. Now it's got two extra digits on there. Not really sure why that is. It seems to be different per modem I've used, but um, in any case, that's reserving this DHCP parameters for this modem specifically. Now I don't have another pool set up, so that's why my laptop is on a static address right now. But uh, in here we have boot file, so that's the Doxis configuration file name that it's gonna pull over TFTP. Next dash server, I don't remember what that one is but it's a parameter that's needed. I think it has something to do with um, the boot file process, but default router and DNS server is all set to the CMTS itself. It's not using the DNS server, but at least there's, it doesn't seem to need to look up any domain names, but if you don't have it set, it'll ignore your DHCP offer. And then right below that, option two is setting a time zone. So that's a weird format, but I believe that's either UTC or GMT. It was whatever was in the Cisco uh, example. Now, the time zone's required for the time of day and all that, so it's sent as a DHCP option. Then right below it, we have option four and seven. I don't remember which one's which, but they are all, there are other parameters. It's, I believe one of them's the TFTP server. No, that's somewhere else. In any case, option four, seven, and 122 are all used in combination. One of them is the time of day server. Uh, option 122 has two instances in there, which are the same IP address. That was something that you had to do for the Xeris modems as well. 
otherwise they ignore it. Have to have both. And then there's domain name and client name. Those are uh, stuck together to make a full URI. You see the client name, which that's the host name portion of it, is set to at use dash MAC address. I haven't tested it, so I don't know if this Motorola is paying attention to it, but with the Eris modems, it'll use its MAC address as the host name and then plus an at symbol plus whatever domain name you have set, which is protostylabs.net in my case. And then at the bottom, we have lease 15 minutes. It's that short because I was just using it for testing and I wanted it to clear out all the weird reservations as I was switching between a whole bunch of different modems trying to get one to work. So that's just DHCP options that are provided in the modem whenever it gets, whenever it sends its request. Scroll down, yep. Okay, interface fast ethernet zero zero. That is this ethernet port, which is going to my home network. Uh, it has a static IP address set and subnet mask. It's set for IP NAT outside, so this has to run NAT because the, uh, the Ethernet interface is on a different subnet than the IP addresses that my laptop and the cable modem are being assigned. Right below it is cable 2 slash 0. That's the UBR-MC11C card that is providing the actual cable interface. At the top we have the IP address set. Now if you had a second pool for your client IP addresses, you would set a secondary address on this interface, so it would be separate. IP NAT inside, so that's defining it's on the inside portion of the network for NAT translation. There we go. Uh, cable downstream Annex B, so that's setting it to use the US DOCSIS standard. There's also Euro DOCSIS, which uses a different option there. I don't know if this CMTS will actually support that, but Annex B is what it needs to be set to. Modulation type for downstream is set to 256 QAM for quadrature amplitude modulation. The other option is 64 QAM. Then interleave depth is set to eight. That's the lowest I can set it. So on my DSLAM video, I had a few people commenting about uh, changing it to use fast mode rather than interleave on my DSL connection to improve the ping times. Now, this seems to be the lowest I can set it. So unless there's some other option I have to change, uh, that seems to be the lowest I can set the interleaving on this cable connection. Apologize for the awful camera work here. And then right below it, downstream frequency is put in here. That's not actually what's being sent by this up converter, nor is it what is sent in there, but that's for reference only. If you were doing this properly and had an actual frequency that you knew what it was, and I mean, you would use a spectrum analyzer, which I don't have, unfortunately and other test equipment to do careful analyzing of your network and figure out what frequencies you need to have this on, you would put your downstream frequency in the config file just for reference. Now the upstream frequency, now it says upstream zero because there are other cards that you can get that have multiple upstream ports. This one just has one. I'll probably end up getting another card, uh, like a, I think it was a UBR-MC, to, no, I, I can't remember what the model is, but there's another card that has multiple upstreams. I'd like to get one of those to experiment with it, and I'll probably put it in that bottom slot, but uh, you can figure the upstream interfaces separately. So that's just setting the frequency of it and the power level. So frequency does actually matter here because the cable modems are gonna basically get the frequency they need to use for the upstream channel from the CMTS. So if I change that, it changes what the cable modem uses. Then uh, no cable upstream zero shutdown, that's enabling upstream zero port. Now this bottom one, the VHCP-GIADDR, um, that is set to primary, so it uses the same pool for modems versus clients. If you set it to policy, it'll use the secondary address and a whole separate IP pool for the clients on the network versus the modems IPs. So again, the modem gets a whole separate IP address than anything else on the cable network. So. And I'm, I mean, you could put that on a whole sub subnet for remotely telnetting into them and managing them, but in my case, it's all on the same subnet because it's just easier to work with. Now, uh, next four lines are just NAT configuration in an access list. So uh, that's just setting it up to translate between internal and external IPs to pass traffic from both my laptop and this modem over this interface and be able to route it back. So basic NAT configuration. Now this line here, this is tftp-server flash colon improved.cm. 
that is uh, that's enabling this CMTS to serve that file over TFTP. So the TFTP server is enabled by default, but you have to tell it which which files it's able to serve. So flash colon is setting the device it's on. Improved.cm is the file name of the Doxis configuration file that this modem is using. So and that's what's set uh, up here in the boot file parameter. Then everything below that's just consoles. So console and telnet configuration. So that's the whole config file of this. Now, obviously, I'm not sure if that's exactly how you're supposed to do this. I'm probably missing a whole bunch of things. Feel free to tell me everything I'm doing wrong about this setup, and you'll probably be right because this is not how you would usually do this, but it is working. And if I actually do show flash, see all the files in flash memory, improved.cm is at the bottom, 73 byte file. So I'm using a software called Vultureware Doxis Configuration File Editor. Um, there is a, I'll put a link to it in, in the description. There's a, it's just like an open Doxis Configuration File Editor that you can use, thank goodness. Cisco has their own, and Aris has their own called Packet Ace that's used to generate the files for their modems, but uh, it is a standard, so it's basically built up of, it's, it's almost kind of similar to JSON in a way, but different syntax. It just it just displays similar to JSON, but basically just parameters and what values they're set to. So I have the upstream and downstream speeds set for this modem and all that, and it configures itself based on that file. But it's all almost compiled or encoded down to a very small format, so that's why it's such a small file. But in terms of that, uh, that's my setup and my very heavy, small CMTS here. So, yeah, uh, eventually I'm going to make a video, I think I mentioned it already, but I'm going to make a video with this, the DSLAM, some routers, some voice gateways. I want to make like a 2000s era network and get everything set up, so at some point I'll probably do that, and I'll show the DSLAM configuration, and maybe I'll have some more things like phone line provisioning on this modem and all that, but until then, that's my CMTS setup.